Um, good afternoon, everyone. Delighted to be on stage here with Matt Quinn from uh, XM Cyber, Technical Director for Europe. And Matt and XM Cyber um, really take a lot of the concepts I talked about this morning in terms of moving from vulnerability management to a more of a continuous threat exposure management approach. And is going to share a lot of insights um, from from his organization about how organizations have been successful doing that. Now, I was going to start with a question from Matt to, to start explaining. Thank me for that, Brian. <laughs> to start explaining about how organizations should move beyond vulnerability management. We have two, two new bits of information today. One is my meticulous survey this morning, which showed that actually pretty much most organizations are actually still struggling, even with the the vulnerability man management, never mind moving on to the wider exposure management. And then secondly, we heard from Patrick and Rich just now that the number one access, uh, initial access is achieved through um, unpatched vulnerabilities. So I might enhance my question, Matt, to say, um, what is what are your thoughts and experiences around helping organizations both operationalize good vulnerability management and go beyond that into wider exposure management? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I'll, I'll actually, I'll uh, move on from the, the longest title in PowerPoint history to uh, uh, to this particular slide because what you described there and also what Patrick described is, is you know, what the attacker is taking advantage of. Um, you know, Patrick was talking about domain credentials, compromising credentials, mimicats, lateral movement, vulnerabilities, you know, this is a much wider set of problems that we're dealing with, yet traditionally we focus just on CVEs, that everything is a CVE problem. We need to try and fix those CVEs. Um, also, you know, Patrick was talking about that SharePoint vulnerability, you know, that actually the, the system itself had said nothing needs to be fixed here because no one was really looking at it from an attacker's perspective. From an attacker's perspective, it actually could be compromised. So we must look at the environment from more of an attacker's uh, perspective. And you, and you can see on screen here, um, you know, actually a lot of the ways that uh, Patrick described some of those use cases. You know, the attacker often starts with uh, a vulnerability to either uh, enter into your organization or start to laterally move through the business. They're stealing things like credentials, the main admin credentials, or, or any other credentials to start to move between different systems. And you can see here on the, uh, uh, on the diagram, you know, the fact that we've actually taken advantage of, or attackers are taking advantage of a lack of network segmentation. Again, we're not stopping the blast radius well enough uh, you know, with these attacks. And from a, uh, an attacker's perspective, uh, you know, looking at um, the on-premise data center, looking at cloud, it's not, uh, they're not different disciplines to an attacker. From an organizational perspective, we might have a separate team looking at cloud, we might have a separate team looking at servers, another one looking at desktops, but the attacker doesn't have those, those limitations. And Brian, I know there was some good conversations around kind of, uh, you know, cloud native uh, protection, but many, in, in my sort of experience, what we're seeing is actually many people are using their clouds as traditional data centers. You know, they've done a, a lift and shift. They've canceled their data center subscription, if you like, and they need to move everything into cloud. So many organizations aren't actually native to the cloud. They're not using lots of Lambda functions and Kubernetes. They've got lots of virtual machines. Many of those systems are just connected to the domain. Um, and it's all these opportunities that, as you saw from, from Patrick's conversation there, this is what is uh, allowing the attacker to get to these critical assets, get to the things that the attacker really cares about and what the organization doesn't want on the dark web um, and leads to, uh, to compromise. Yeah, because there was a discussion um, during that panel session around the top security concerns around cloud and it was, number one was misconfigurations and user mistakes, but there was also um, a, n a number of other ones listed like identities and insecure data, unstructured data. Um, so are you saying that all of that isn't neatly contained within the cloud domain and actually you need to think wider than just looking within the cloud for those types of issues? Yeah, 100%. I mean, if you can see in the diagram here, we've got a, you know, a, a cloud environment and, and very much you know, a large portion of a cloud attacks take advantage of IAM and you know, misconfigurations between lots of clouds or cloud accounts. 
Um, but if you imagine what the attacker is able to do, if you think uh, you know a big portion of organizations here today will have uh, Azure, Microsoft Azure, they'll have on-premise Active Directory, they'll be synchronizing AD with Azure using AAD Connect or Entro ID Connect, whatever Microsoft decide to call it today. Um, that is an opportunity for the attacker to compromise that on-premise server and have unvetted access into Azure. So if we only look at cloud with just a cloud-only mindset, we're not going to actually see all the opportunities the attacker can take to get into the cloud. Again, we've got lots of developers' laptops all around the organization that have all got cached PRT tokens and uh, AWS access tokens, GCP tokens. These are all the entry points. So we need to have a much kind of wider understanding of all the, all the risks together. It kind of goes back to the definition of an exposure, which my definition was anything that can be leveraged by a threat actor. Mm -hmm. They don't care that we happen to have a cloud security team and a network firewall security team and an endpoint security team. They're going to use whatever they can to build their attack path, correct? Exactly that, yeah. It's, I mean, it's talk about, you know, silo technology, silo teams, uh, and everyone's overwhelmed. If we just took CVEs, and I think that, you know, same to your presentation. You know, I'm still going here, hopefully. Um, you know, CVEs alone, people are overwhelmed with CVEs. And yet, as you can see from Patrick's presentation, there's a much wider set of problems that we need to look at. And we've got silo teams, silo technologies. We also don't really know where to focus. You know, we've got these big lists of problems. We've got output from, you know, top CVE vendors. We've got lots of other risks that we might have. We don't really know where to focus. The, the green dots on the diagram here represent things that we've actually fixed, but they're not actually reducing the risk to our most critical assets because we're not thinking like the attacker. And in many cases, this creates a massive inefficiency. Up to 75% of these exposures actually don't lead anywhere. They're dead ends. And yet our infrastructure teams are spending all of their time fixing these issues. This creates a little bit of a disconnect as well. You know, security often aren't always doing the fixing, right? You know, security is at the, at the mercy of the infrastructure teams, the cloud teams, the on-prem teams. So look, I found this problem. Can you go and fix it? But, but they're overwhelmed. Those teams are overwhelmed. They've got other things going on. Without the context of why it's so important to fix this problem, you have this big window of opportunity. Again, you know, Patrick identified, you know, those CVEs around for you know weeks, months, years, uh, uh, even. Yeah, and in fact, in, um, when we work with customers uh, helping with vulnerability management, one of the big asks we find from security teams is help in chasing down the remediation side of of the house, which could be disparate infrastructure teams within the organisation. It could be third-party providers they have, IT providers. And managing all of that is a huge overhead for hard-pressed and relatively small security teams, and they need help. But it, that's exacerbated if you're actually chasing the wrong problems to solve. Yeah. Right, so that's the goal here, isn't it? Really to find out what critically you need to fix to mitigate the most risk in the most efficiently. It, it, exactly that. And, you know, the organizations have, have typically, typically taken these approaches, right? Looking at exposures just from a CVE perspective, and that is a limitation in itself, right? Only looking at CVEs. Um, and, you know, vulnerability management tools don't always look at the exploitability. Yes, they might say threat actor X uses it or that there's an exploit kit on GitHub, but how could it actually be exploited in your environment? That SharePoint example is, is, is a perfect example of the fact that, you know, in that particular environment, that vulnerability could be exploited. Um, you know, and taking the red team te uh, approach, the pen testing approach is the right approach to take, but we need to augment that approach with a more continuous approach as well, right? Um, because it, that joining those two approaches together gives you that complete uh, coverage. So this is what XM Cyber does. We look at all of the different types of exposures, CVEs, credential issues, misconfigurations, cloud issues, Kubernetes problems, Active Directory. We have a much wider set of exposures that we're looking for. What is used in the wild? What can actually be exploited within the context of your environment? And I'll explain what that means. And we build these attack graphs that allow us to see what are the opportunities the attacker can take to get to your most critical assets. But we improve the remediation efficiency by understanding something that we call choke points. What is a choke point? Well, if we go back to this environment here, organizations actually have hundreds, thousands of possible opportunities that the attacker can take, right? 
an attacker lands in you know, machine A, a different attacker lands somewhere else. We need to understand the whole business. What are all the opportunities? So XM Cyber calculates these, uh, all of these attack paths on a continuous and safe uh, perspective. However, this looks overwhelming, right? Lots of possible problems to fix. So how do we, how do we prioritize? How do we, how do we focus? Well, the first one here is that this is a high severity vulnerability. Let's take log4j. And in the context of this network, the attacker can actually exploit it from network A to network B, but there's no onward path from this machine. As you can see, there's nothing going towards the, the diamonds on the, on the right-hand side. So we can kind of put this back down the list. You know, we don't need to fix this today because it's not really putting our business at risk. And to think about the, that, that CNI infrastructure, it's not gonna put that CNI infrastructure at risk. There are other risks though, that we call choke points. This is putting our organization, it's creating the largest amount of risk, um, but it's the smallest, you know, the, the biggest gaps. If we fix these issues, and XM Cyber will identify these on a continuous basis and show you step by step how to fix these, it's the least amount of effort for the maximum reward, and this is a measurable process as well, and I think that's, uh, that's quite important. And is there any, uh, obviously this is a great way to find what's going to give you the greatest return in terms of your remediation. Do you just ignore the rest or put them in a bucket or get to them later? What, how do you manage that, that long tail, if you like, of other? Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting, actually. I, I get that question a lot around uh, Cyber Essentials, if many of you do that, because Cyber Essentials, rightly or wrongly, and, and most people say wrongly, but they say, you know, you must patch everything anyway. So even, even if uh, there's no real risk to it, to be compliant. So really, when you get into those kind of situations, a lot of the time, you do still want to get around to these issues. It could be issues in the future. Um, but today, what you need to focus on, your team needs to focus on this on a Monday or whatever it might be, the top risks that actually put your business at risk. And this is always about bubbling up the most important risks in the one or two places rather than the thousands of places that you, uh, that you need to focus on. Very good. OK. Um, you know, just 2% of the risks in an organization, and this is from, from one of our reports, uh, actually reduces you know, all the risks to your most critical assets. This is a, a much more efficient way of looking at the uh, environment. This is just a bit of a, uh, um, some of you might have actually joined the, uh, uh, the demo earlier on, but this is the kind of visualization that you get from the platform. So we take that attacker's mindset, we assume breach, we run these continuous attack simulations, and we show you what is possible uh, and also um, how you're improving over time. So you can see on the diagram on the, on the left-hand side, uh, you know, a big portion of the environment can be compromised by a virtual attacker. But just a couple of different issues in the environment, in this case, public-facing server, we talked about before, EDR not running, that was something Patrick mentioned, and the fact that there were two cached privileged credentials, which I think was also similar to Patrick, it's, it's kind of like we've written this together. Um, that actually allowed the attacker to, to compromise the whole environment. So just a couple of things that needed to be addressed dramatically reduced the risk down that you can see on the right-hand side. And I won't kind of labor the, the point around this sort of CTEM approach that, that Gartner has been talking about quite heavily. But again, you know, we're mapping on to all the key parts of that. You know, the scope, understanding on-prem cloud, Active Directory, uh, you know, the ability to um, discover these issues and um, prioritize those problems, a key, a key part of that, and actually validate that they can be attacked and validate that we're getting rid of them. But also importantly, mobilizing the team, you know, actually integrating with ticketing tools and having the visualization so the team is actually going and fixing stuff, because this is often the bit that, that fails. There's great technologies out there, but people aren't, aren't using them. Uh, correctly. And what have you seen in terms of what are the barriers to adopting this approach, moving on from traditional approaches, and you know who's been the most successful, and you know how have they man managed that, if you like? Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's that just understanding of the wider picture. You know, it, it's it is that that change in mindset that okay, yes, I've been looking at CVEs for the last like twenty years. I need to change that mindset, and actually the use cases that Patrick has you know, as a clear definition of why you need to change that mindset. So I think that's one of the challenges is, you know, actually wanting to come along that journey, accepting that the way we're doing it today is not right and we need to take a bit of a, yeah. uh, a, bit of a step change. Does it help when um, there is an approach looking at the likes of attack paths and choke points and helping to prioritize? 
that almost frees frees up headspace from pure vulnerability management to look further then into other areas of exposure? Yeah, I mean, um, the next, oh, there might have been another slide before, but, um, you know, because of the efficiencies that teams are able to gain, they are able then to say, okay, look, you know, we were trying to fix thousands of CVEs before, now XM, you know, and I360 are working in partnership, and you know, these are the one or two things that we need to fix. Now we can start to look at the other the other risks. Um, you know, and things like Active Directory, I've spoken to a few organizations today, lots of organizations like that, multiple domains, lots of Active Directory domains, some are trusted, some are not trusted, some have come from mergers and acquisitions. You know, that understanding of AD even by itself, an attacker might not even touch a CVE. You yeah. know, just go straight for the credential, straight for the domain, um, you know, and compromise an OT environment. And given the expanding attack surface, um, you know, you often hear the statement, identity is the new perimeter. And uh, one of our guys, Ahmed, who was on stage earlier, researched it and found that, that actually somebody 10 years ago said identity is the new perimeter. So it's it's been around for quite a while. But obviously, with so many resources off network, accessing infrastructure, SaaS applications, that identity layer and bringing that into your exposure management um, um, process is, is kind of critical in, in today's environment, surely. Yeah, very much so. And again, you know, all the clouds and all the on-prem are, are kind of guilty of it, but, you know, Active Directory is very synchronized with uh, Azure. You know, you only have to take advantage of a few misconfigurations. I've got a good example, not, not from one of these customers we're going to show now, but, you know, two separate businesses, um, uh, they had two separate domains, but were trusted. Business A, quite well configured. Uh, business B, uh, every object in their Active Directory had the ability to modify the group policy of every object in that domain, mm. including the domain controller. So from an attacker's perspective, if you land anywhere in that business, you've compromised the domain you know, uh, completely. And because there's a domain trust, you now compromise the other domain that relates to the other business. So this is why you need that that complete organizational understanding. If you just work in silos, you're never going to see the, the, yeah. the true picture. And Anya mentioned the benefit of getting tangible about and giving real life case studies. So could you take us through a couple of examples of real organizations who yeah, have- Yeah, definitely. We, we work with a lot of organizations. There's a couple we're allowed to, to reference in sort of true Oscars style. They can't be with us today, but uh, uh, we, they have given us permission to talk about the uh, the use, case, uh, use cases. Here are some of those use cases and I'll kind of show you. Um, but, you know, that ransomware readiness, understanding what the potential blast radius is from ransomware, uh, CVE prioritization, understanding what can be truly attacked. Uh, SOC efficiency, you know, if you know and you are predicting all the opportunities an attacker can take, if you're working in a SOC and you've got a thousand alarms saying there's a thousand possible malware events, which one you should you focus on? The one that leads to your critical assets. So by understanding the opportunities the attacker can take, we can actually make a lot of efficiencies. That helps with things like OT security, segmentation. You know, there's a lot of IT in OT. If many of you are sort of manufacturers, you'll understand this concept of the, the Purdue model, which is the layers that exist between sort of IT and OT, and the attackers making their way through those. We'll help with digital transformation and cloud. As you, uh, as, as you start on-prem and you start moving more and more things to cloud, how does your posture change? Do you in increase your attack surface? Helps us to deal with cyber risk, reporting, or compliance. Uh, supply chain and third-party risk. Again, we understand from where you let third parties into your organization, what is the blast radius from those points within your business. Uh, and that also helps with M&A. I had a quite a few com good conversations with organizations where you know, you're about to have a, an M&A, you, you buy a business, understand the posture, where the weakest points, fix those issues, bring them into the, uh, the, the main organization. So Brian, your, your kind of question was, you know, what, what does that look like for some of your, your customers? So there's two uh, clients I wanted to, to, to focus on today, two um, XM and uh, Integrity360 customers. I actually think maybe some of this cheese was in the uh, sandwiches outside. Uh, so, <laughs> and to be honest, I love this case study because in our family we we love the vintage cheddar from from the, the Dubliner cheese. It's ah. absolutely fantastic. I'd recommend it for anybody who hasn't <laughs> tried it before. So very important to protect these guys, then, is it, Brian? Absolutely, yeah. I don't want the supply chain damaged in terms yeah, of cheese uh, into our house. It, it, exactly, but but that is actually their concern, right? 
they're sort of made up of two parts of the business. You've got Carberry Group uh, and then Carberry itself, which is the cheese manufacturer. Um, you know, they have lots of locations where they're actually making the cheese, the logistics, getting it onto trucks to take it to, you know, various uh, uh, places to purchase it. Uh, they also acquired an organisation called, uh, called Synergy uh, Taste. Um, they're actually based in the, in the US. Our, our uh, uh, Simon, who was potentially going to present today, is actually out in the US at the moment. Um, so, again, two separate businesses, two different parts of the environment, connected by a cloud. Uh, um, and, again, risks to IT to OT, shared infrastructure, moving more and more into the cloud, and quite agile. So they're using Integrity 360 kind of pen testing services, and they're getting a lot of value out of that. But they also recognize that because their business is moving so fast, they also needed that continuous approach. So they're leveraging the two pieces. So XM Cyber's deployed across their whole on-prem environment, looking at the Active Directory, looking at the cloud. We're understanding those choke points, understanding how the attacker can actually move from on-prem uh, into the cloud, eliminating possible paths that actually would stop that cheese reaching your uh, family's table, Brian. So, mm -hmm. you know, important, you know, they're understanding how could the attacker get in there. Um, and again, you know, they've improved their resilience. Uh, you know, they've been able to measure this as well. So now they're actually using this output to go back to the business and say, look, we, we understand our posture today, and this is what we're doing to improve it. They go back next week, we've made these improvements, and we can see from XM Cyber's perspective that actually uh, it, it is far less likely the attacker to be successful. Um, we also work with uh, IEDT, uh, so Institute of Art, uh, Design, and, and Technology. Again, the, the reason why I bring these guys up is, you know, different use case altogether, right? You know, different environment. They're looking after, you know, thousands of students, lots of staff, lots of third-party access into their environment. So they have, a, you know, potential third-party risk. Um, and actually, they have a lot of student medical data as well. So we think about these, uh, the idea of what the attacker wants to get to, you know, stealing student medical data is quite important. So what we're doing, again, we're deployed across the on-prem and, uh, and AD environments. They're doing a little bit uh, more into the cloud uh, in the future, I think. Um, and again, we're prioritizing the, the, the top risks. Again, they're a fairly small team, right? They don't have the luxury of trying to chase down every possible opportunity. So they are just focusing on those top choke points that are reducing the risk uh, uh, the most, eliminating risks from third-party access that they had no visibility of before. They, again, ransomware hits a third party, they would be a potential impacted organization, but now they've cut off those choke points. Um, and they're also uh, doing that CVE prioritization, you know, understanding that there are vulnerabilities that maybe haven't been addressed for a while because the patching solution says we're good, but actually they hadn't been fixed from a, an attacker's perspective. And presumably a very messy attack surface environment, a campus with buildings and different students and identities and devices all traversing the environment. Yeah, it's a, it's a great, great example. Again, you know, think about students, they're inquisitive by design. That's why they're, that's why they're going to these places, right? So, you know, they're often a likely entry point. And again, for, for these guys, what we're showing is that being in the student network, the attacker could move to other parts of the environment. They've closed those things down because we've shown them what the opportunities are. Excellent. So I think we're coming up on time, but maybe a few takeaways to leave the audience with for today. Yeah, just a, just a few kind of takeaways. And again, you know, XM Cyber, you know, we're hoping is a, a good, valid approach for many of you in this room. But just think about the CTM approach in, in general. Uh, again, you know, you want to widen that scope. Think kind of uh, wider than just CVEs. You want to look across the misconfigurations, the AD, the cloud, have a way to actually continuously understand those risks. Um, look at cloud from all angles. Again, as we can see from, from my diagram, you know, most organizations aren't that kind of you know, cloud native. Many are, don't get me wrong, but you know, understand what all the opportunities are. You know, AWS offers a managed Active Directory service, right? So even if you're AWS, you might have AD in there. So we've got to really look at a cloud from a traditional on-prem perspective and a cloud native perspective. I think move more to continuous. Again, you know, so yes, use those pen tests, use those red teaming exercises, but also augment that with a more continuous approach, whether or not it's a team member that you use to just log into various things every sort of week or whatever and check things, or a more, you know, 24-7 approach like XM. 
Um, and then focus on those quick wins. You know, XM Cyber is all about bubbling up those quick wins. So get those quick wins that reduce the risk the most, and then start to plan for more medium and long-term uh, remediation activities. Okay, Matt, so that's been fantastic. I think there's a lot to think about there and a lot of insight. So really appreciate it. So thanks, everyone, for, for listening. Thanks, everyone.